Venezuela has been receiving massive attention from the international community since National Assembly Chief Juan Guaido declared himself acting interim president of Venezuela. With socialist president Nicolas Maduro hanging on to power, these are their respective key supports, inside and outside the OPEC member. Who's standing behind Maduro? Military. The Venezuela armed forces are considered the backbone of the government, and on Thursday senior military officers reaffirmed support for Maduro, claiming that there was an effective coup underway. Of 32 cabinet ministers, nine are from the military and run portfolios such as defense, interior, agriculture, and the intelligence service, as well as state oil giant PDVSA, which contributes 96% of the country's income. They also control a television station, a bank and a vehicle assembly plant, among other companies. But their support has come under some threat. The military attaché of Venezuela in Washington, Colonel José Luis Silva, announced Saturday that he no longer recognizes Maduro as a legitimate president, and urged his military brothers to back Guaido. International creditors and allies China, Venezuela's biggest creditor with some $20 billion owed, said Thursday it opposed external interference after the United States and some allies recognized Guaido as interim leader. Venezuela's number two creditor, Russia, also backs it militarily in December it sent two bombers and some 100 officers to Caracas for joint exercises. President Vladimir Putin called Maduro to express his support. Countries such as Turkey, Cuba, Bolivia, Uruguay, and Mexico as well as Iran and North Korea continue to recognize the 56-year-old Maduro. Justice. Venezuela's Supreme Court of Justice TSJ supports the Maduro regime. Court justices were chosen by the pro-government National Assembly in December 2015, just days before the opposition took control of the legislature. Since 2016 the top court has declared the opposition controlled the legislature in contempt and voided all of its actions. The court on Thursday reiterated its support for Maduro regime. Venezuela's top prosecutor, Attorney General Tarek William Saab, also is a Maduro loyalist. National Constituent Assembly Maduro convened the staunchly pro-government assembly after four months of opposition protests that left about 125 dead in 2017. It has absolute powers and serves as the de facto legislature, the opposition says it was created illegally. Electoral Authority The National Electoral Council CNE, in charge of running elections, is chaired by the openly pro-government Tibise Lucina. Under her management, several opposition parties have been disqualified, and on Thursday it issued a statement endorsing Maduro. Rulings by pro-government judges and the CNE thwarted opposition efforts to hold a referendum to revoke Maduro's presidency in 2016, a vote allowed under the Constitution. Opposition parties refused to participate in the last elections, including the May 2018 presidential vote in which Maduro was re-elected, saying there were no guarantees of impartiality. They say Maduro was elected through fraud. Who is backing Guaido? International support. The United States, along with several Latin America and European Union countries, refused to recognize Maduro's re-election. When Guaido proclaimed himself acting interim president U.S. President Donald Trump quickly recognized him. Other countries, including Brazil, Colombia, Argentina, and Australia, quickly followed. On Sunday Israel said it would recognize Guaido as president. Six European countries Spain, France, Germany, Britain, Portugal, the Netherlands on Saturday demanded that either Venezuela call elections within eight days or they would recognize Guaido as interim leader. Some European countries such as Greece still support Maduro. The head of the Washington-based Organization of American States, Uruguayan Luis Almagro, also gave his support to Guaido. National Assembly the opposition-controlled National Assembly was elected in 2015 when a coalition of opposition parties handed the leftist regime its biggest electoral defeat ever. After taking office on January 5, Guaido, 35, began to press for a transitional government and new elections, calling on the military to break with the government in exchange for an amnesty. Justice in exile. A Venezuelan Supreme Court in exile, with members appointed by the National Assembly, on Wednesday welcomed Guaido's will to take over as acting leader pending new elections.